One thing I'd like to talk about is pelvic fracture and the possible complications that patients can receive in regards to their urinary tract. The two main complications that we worry about is damage to the erections as well as damage to the urethra. The ure urethra sits directly below the pubic bones and during the shearing forces of a pelvic fracture, the urethra can be torn off the base or the bottom of the prostate in the area of the perineum. The nerves for erections also sit in this area and these can be damaged or the blood supply to the penis can be damaged also from the shearing forces of the pelvic fracture. When patients experience erectile dysfunction after pelvic fracture, often the erections will come back spontaneously on their own, but not always, and they need an assessment by a urologist. Here at the Center for Reconstructive Urology and Men's Health, Dr. William Brandt and Dr. James Hotaling specialize in treatment of men with erectile dysfunction after pelvic fracture. Most often, they will assess men with an ultrasound of the penis to establish whether there's good blood flow to the penis and whether the primary problem is a nerve injury or a blood flow problem. And then they'll, then they'll typically treat with medicines. If the medicines aren't effective and if patients don't achieve erection spontaneously on their own, then men can go on to other treatments such as a penile prosthesis. One of the things I'm going to talk about is urethral injury after pelvic fracture. I specialize in treatment of urethral injury after pelvic fracture. What can occur is during the shearing forces of a pelvic fracture, the urethra is torn off the bottom of the prostate or the apex of the prostate. This results in a variable gap between the urethra and the prostate, which needs to be reconnected in a surgery done mostly through the perineum which is the area between the scrotum and the anus. Sometimes patients have a catheter placed across the gap between the urethra and the prostate shortly after their injury or right at the time of their injury. This is called a urethral catheter. The hopes are that a urethral catheter across the gap will help the urethra heal to the prostate apex. This is controversial about whether this is true or not but no doubt many men develop serious scarring even when a urethral catheter has been successfully placed across the gap. Many other men have just a suprapubic tube placed or they'll have both catheters placed. A suprapubic tube is a tube that comes out of the top of the bladder traveling through the abdominal wall and exits below the belly button or the umbilicus. And this will drain the bladder from above rather than going through the penis. Unfortunately, reconstructive surgery is rarely done immediately after the injury. And the main reason for this is that the damage induced by the surgery is much more severe immediately after the injury. This was an approach that was mostly abandoned in the 1970s. Now, currently, we typically wait about three months after the injury for all of the scarring to set up and for the extent of the injury to declare itself. During that time, patients are dependent on a suprapubic tube for drainage of their bladder. After enough time has elapsed, then a surgery can be performed through the perineum, the area between the scrotum and the anus, where the scarred tissue is removed or resected, and the healthy urethra is connected to the top of the prostate. This is known as a posterior urethroplasty. This surgery typically takes anywhere from two and a half hours to five hours, depending on the extent and the nature of the defect or the nature of the gap. Some of the surgeries are very straightforward. Others of the surgeries are very difficult, depending on how much scarring and how much damage is present. Before the surgery, it's essential that we obtain some x-rays to find out how long the gap is between the prostate and the urethra so we can at least try to anticipate how difficult the surgery will be and what likely the side effects of the surgery will be. I'd like to show you uh, one of these x-rays. This is a typical x-ray that shows the gap between the prostate and the urethra past the area of damage. Here you can see the gap is just maybe a centimeter and a half to two centimeters. Here's the bladder up here.
This is the bladder neck, which is a sphincter muscle that works very well. This is the prostate uh, urethra, and then this is the gap between the two ends. So in the surgery, we'll cut out the scarred tissue, then we mobilize this urethra or free it up from all the surrounding tissue so that it can be stretched down and we make a very fine connection between the two urethral ends. Fortunately, this type of surgery with posterior urethroplasty is very successful. It typically is greater than 85% successful at reestablishing the connection between the urethra and the prostate. Most men do not have urinary leakage after the surgery because the sphincter muscle at the top of the prostate where it meets the bladder is a very strong one, especially in younger men. Many men also preserve the sphincter that's at the lower portion of the prostate. It really depends on where the injury occurs. It can occur at subtle locations that are out of the, the sphincter complex. After surgery, men typically have the urethral catheter for three to four weeks, and we also maintain the suprapubic catheter. We then do x-rays to make sure that the urethra has healed, and then the urethral catheter is removed. The suprapubic tube is then plugged, and we make sure that men are voiding strongly and don't have any complications for one to two weeks after removal of the urethral catheter. Provided that men are voiding strongly and don't have problems, then we remove the suprapubic tube from the abdomen one to two weeks later, and men start voiding completely on their own without any indwelling catheters in place. Close follow-up is essential for these problems. We typically see patients at three months after the catheters have been removed and yearly afterward. During this post-operative visit, we measure patient's flow, talk to them about erectile function and sexual function, about any urinary leakage they experience, and we typically will also look at the urethra and make sure the area of surgery is healed. This is a very short exam with a cystoscope which takes about 30 seconds and is not overly painful. The very painful part of a cystoscopy is where the scope is passed into the bladder. That's not necessary for examining urethral strictures postoperatively. We just need to pass the scope through the penis up to the area of surgery, examine this area, and remove the scope. We manage these types of injuries from all over the country, mostly from the Intermountain West and the Rocky Mountains. These types of surgeries are very specialty specific, and while there are a lot of urologists that perform urethroplasty very well, after pelvic fracture, generally patients are sent to a tertiary center like University of Utah or other universities in the West and on the West Coast. These are usually the only places where reconstructive urologists see enough of pelvic fractures to perform them regularly and have a good familiarity and also have a good chance of a very successful outcome. If you've had a pelvic fracture and you have a urethral stricture and you're wondering where to go, seek out one of these centers like University of Utah where we have a good experience with treating many men with pelvic fracture and urethral injury. We'd be happy to consult with you on the phone if you're coming from far away and arrange for any uh, visit tests that need to be done and talk to you about surgery that might be needed. Even though the injury after a pelvic fracture to the urethra can be severe, we have a very good track record of successful outcome and the surgeries that we do are generally successful. We don't have any magic at University of Utah, but we perform a lot of posterior urethroplasties and have a good experience with the surgery and treatment of patients with this problem.